Hi there. In this video, I'm going to change gears slightly. Uh, we're going to talk about mapping data, plotting data, instead of the usual modeling data videos. Um, we're going to do this using ggmap. If you haven't used the ggmap package before, then you're in for a treat. Let me just pull it up. And we're going to be looking at the getMap function. So what does a getMap function do? Um, when you call this function, you pass it uh, a form of uh, coordinate. So it can be a geographical coordinate, like a latitude, longitude. But it can also be uh, the, the name of the country, the name of the continent, and famous landmarks as well. And you give it a, a, um, a zoom level right here so it can be automatic or you can give a specific zoom level and what gg what, what get map does is it has access to a huge map of the world it will zoom in with the coordinates and the zoom level to the area you want take a big pair of scissors cut it up and return it to you as an image file and then you can layer on top of it whatever you want in a nutshell that's that's what it does um, uh, GetMap and GGMap supports uh, a variety of uh, of map providers, including you know uh, OpenStreetMap, Stammen Maps, etc. I have only used this with Google Maps, so that's what the walkthrough will be using today. And um, it's uh, it has a few functions of interest: color. You can get we can return the map as a color map, a black and white map. You can um, choose the type of terrain, just like you would on a phone. You know, terrain or satellite road map. For lighter maps, you have hybrid, toner, watercolor, and these are a lot easier to plot things on top, like uh, writing, etc. So it's something you have to play around to find the right map to um, describe to to show your data. Okay, so in order to do to do the walkthrough, we're going to uh, download data from the 2006-2010 census. It's uh, uh, for the United States. So normally you would go to census.gov and download the shape file for the for the area you need. Uh, thankfully, the University of Michigan Institute for Social Research graciously provides uh, a a national map um, a national file. Uh, of the medium household, the median, the mean, the median household, and the population count for all the zip codes in the in the United States. So we're going to, which is going to save us a little bit of time. So we need to, before I go there, we need to load a few libraries. We're going to start with rcurl. rcurl will handle our all the HTTP protocol to download the file from the internet, and we're going to also need the XLSX package, which will allow us to um, extract the data out of an Excel spreadsheet, as that is the format in which the University of Michigan saved the data. So here it is. So this is where we're going. We choose a destination file, so where we're going to save it on our local drive. Download file. This is part of our curl. Tell it the, the URL destination. And finally, uh, this is part of the XLSX file. Uh, package. Uh, we do the read.xlx2 xlsx2 and we ask specifically for a sheet name named median. There are like a few sheets in there and we only want the one with the median with the median data. So here it is, it's going downloading the data and here it is. So let's take a peek at what we have. So it returns a zip code, the median uh, the medium income and the population. So we're going to do a little bit of cleaning up here. For starters, we're going to drop the population. We don't need it. And we're going to um, clean up the name of the median. There we go. So let's see what we have so far. So this is looking a lot smaller, like the way we want to. Two more things we need to do. Well, well. Actually, we need to uh, fix the median. It's actually a factor, and we want it to be a number. So that's easy to do. We're going to first uh, change the factor to a character, and then we're going to cast it to numeric. And just in case there are some commas in there, we're going to remove them. Let's see. Where, how is it looking so far? 
There we go. Right, these are numbers now. And one more thing we need to do is a zip code. You'll notice that there's only four digits. Zip codes in the United States have five digits. So we're going to fix that, and that's going to require calling another package called zip code. Now, zip code is pretty cool if you work with zip codes. It will um, it, it will clean up your zip codes, so it will buffer with zeros, like in this case we have to have a zero at, in front of each one of these numbers. It will also remove the plus four uh, zip code data. So uh, in, in some areas you'll have the zip code, which are five digits, plus another four digits, which uh, gives you more granularity to the zip code area. But we don't want that in this case, and this, this package zip code will, will remove that. And more importantly, for what our needs today, is it, it has a map of uh, the the centroid longitude latitude for each one of these zip codes. So basically, you look at the zip code area, the center point of that zip code is the coordinates, uh, the latitude longitude what that we need to map those zip codes on a map, and the zip code package has that file. And the way you get to those to that data is you download data.zip code first function we're going to call, part of the zip code package, is called clean.zipcodes. And this is going to clean out our zip codes. Basically, it's going to buffer, uh, make all the zip codes five digits by either buff, uh, padding with zeros, removing anything else. And it's going to, um, well, that's what's going to clean it. And in order to, then we're going to merge our zip codes from our census file with all the zip codes in this zip code data. And that's how we're going to get the longitude latitude. So let's see what we have. I remind you, all this code is going to be on GitHub. So uh, if you want to download it in one go, that's where to go. The, the link will be in the description of this video. And there you have it. So the zip codes are looking good. Five digits, medium income are numbers. It does give us the city and state as well, which not, we're not going to use, and the important latitude and longitude longitude, the geographical coordinates that we need to map. Okay, so we're um, getting closer to uh, mapping our data. So now we need to go get the map. Now this is the interesting thing I was talking, to, I was referring to earlier, the get map function. So we're not going to pass it a, uh, a geographical coordinate. Instead, we're going to pass it a, a country, the United States. We're going to give it the zoom level 4, which works well for um, for a country, even a continent, and um, uh, if you want to get a city or, or, or smaller areas, you can go all the way up to, I think, to 10. 10 is very close, but for a, for, for a city, a zoom, I think, of 8 will work well. We're going to ask for terrain. We're going to ask for a color map, and uh, the, the source is going to be Google. There we go. This is actually going to go to the Google Map API. There you see, it went out. And now we hold an image file of the map we need. And the rest of this is uh, ggmap works uh, uh, closely with uh, ggplot2. So we simply pass ggmap, the map we got from ggmap, to uh, um, G the, a regular plotting uh, function from ggplot. So, you know, geopoint. Um, we give it the, we tell it from our data set of uh, census, plot the longitude, the latitude, and the color will be the median, and that's what we're going to use to kind of plot the, the median income on the map. We're also going to scale our, our, our values from beige to blue, so the low values um, as the medium household income will be in the lighter color, the higher values in the medium household income will be in a, in a blue. Let's see what we have. So there we have a map. So I'm going to resize it so we can see it. And there you have it, the, the, the medium household income in the United States plotted on the United States. So you can see some pockets of wealth here on the, the East Coast and on the West Coast in California. It's hard to see, it's hard to read, and there are a few things we can do to make, because um, all the colors are kind of overlapping. So there are a few things we can do to make this more readable. There's actually a lot of things you can do with uh, ggplot, but we're not going to look at uh, too many of those details. Instead, we're going to try to lower the alpha value, basically have more transparency without the value. Let's try 
a 2. And there it's a little bit easier. So, so the other areas kind of pop out, and you still, you still see where the, the wealth is compared to the rest of the country. So something else we could do, we probably could try our 1 on the alpha level. And let's do this. Let's do two. Let's do a couple of things. Let's do. Let's go back to our. Let's get a different map, and this this time let's get a black and white map. Same map as we did before from Google. Same zoom size, except we're not. We're requesting a black and white. And we're going to take our our ggplot function call, and it's, we're still going to. Well, let's try a one. And let's try a different uh, set of colors. Let's try uh, white to black. Now should be interesting. Okay, so obviously a black and white map on a black and white uh, layer isn't the best idea. So let's try, let's go back with some color. Let's try, um, let's try, let's go back to the beige and go to red. And there, so you can see a little bit more where, where the wealth is in California. Still, there's just so much data here on the, the East Coast that everything overlaps. So there's definitely a lot of things you can do to um, to to alleviate this. Uh, I would keep playing and also keep playing with the colors, come up with a better color scheme than this one. But this is a way to to plot, uh, uh, to map your data on any map of the world uh, in just a few lines. So I was really amazed at how easy it is to plot data. So and I hope you will find use for this too. Thank you.